We've actually been developing a resource called healthmap.org, which is a data mining tool that essentially scrapes the web uh, in completely automated fashion looking for outbreaks of infectious disease and really essentially relies on the news media for those reports. And the reason is that, that the, the news media has a much greater reach around the world than in fact public health. Um, because of the lack of resources or the lack of infrastructure and, and personnel, there isn't the, the, the potential for public health officials to be everywhere at once and to collect information on disease outbreaks. However, the news media is essentially uh, saturated across the world and has opportunities to collect information that public health does not. And so we actually rely on the news media as a sentinel of information around outbreaks, around problems in communities, events, whether they're disasters naturally or, or, or bioterrorism. So all sorts of different events that are occurring around the world can be tracked actually with the news media. There's opportunities to, for instance, look at problems around particular prescription drugs in communities, looking at, for instance, the OxyContin problem that has swept the United States. Um, the news media actually represents a really good sentinel source of problems going on in communities, whether it's overdoses in, in high school students or a robbery of a, a pharmacy. And in fact, the, the news media's tracking of, of for instance, an OxyContin uh, problem is actually a sentinel to morbidity and mortality in the population. Now, we don't know if it's just a good surveillance tool or potentially uh, there's actually a cause and effect where the news media tends to amplify a problem, discuss it, and actually turn people's attention to, for instance, abusing OxyContin, where you have a news report that essentially talks about, oh, you know, OxyContin is this product that can be abused, it might gain some attention and, and you might, as a result, see, for instance, students going off and, and attempting to try to, to abuse it. We are thinking about expanding these types of analyses to a variety of, of public health settings, including suicides and overdoses and um, other, th other particular areas that might be influenced by the media. For instance, um, glue sniffing, the glue sniffing phenomenon was actually a media created phenomenon that then swept the US after it had been reported on because it wasn't in fact a problem until the media had actually discussed it. And so there's some very clear examples where the media's interest in creating a story can actually fuel a public health problem. To get a uh, medication approved by the FDA, uh, a drug company goes through several phases of, of study. And in the, uh, really the final phase before approval, usually a randomized controlled trial is performed on a limited number of patients who tend to have relatively few comorbidities taking uh, relatively few additional medications and taking a medication for a relatively short period of time. The drug is then prescribed potentially widely, like Vioxx, and the safety problems will show up across populations. The problem is there has not been a systematic approach to monitoring those populations. Rather, traditional post-marketing surveillance has been to, again, monitor relatively smaller populations and to focus in and do studies that are more analogous to the, um, to the, to the uh, pre-approval clinical trials. What we are proposing to do and are developing the methods to do is to monitor for the health impact of a medication across health systems, across very large data sets, so that we can look for adverse effects of medications that were either that were either um, suspected based on low-level signals that we found in the pre-approval data or unsuspected uh, by monitoring the health of the population in ways that uh, traditionally I think neither uh, pharma, the FDA, nor the healthcare system has done systematically. What we found in a study of uh, Vioxx was that looking across a health system, uh, that myocardial infarctions uh, over a five-year period went up very dramatically and then came down very dramatically. And when we overlaid um, prescriptions of COX-2 inhibitors on that graph, what we were able to see was a very tight correlation um, between uh, myocardial infarctions uh, rising and COX-2 inhibitor or Vioxx and Celebrex prescriptions 
rising in their rate. And then after withdrawal, myocardial infarction is coming back down to normal. Now, we uh, uh, found this association retrospectively. We were looking for it. Um, but what was surprising to us was that um, the healthcare system wasn't really even monitoring the rates of myocardial infarctions, of myocardial infarctions um, in its population. It seems like a very basic thing to do, and yet the approach we've taken to monitoring data with biosurveillance by looking at data over time um, is one that is not traditionally uh, used to monitor health outcomes in any kind of a prospective, systematic way.